Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Tyler Matheson. And I'm Rebecca Jarvis. Larry Kudlow's out tonight. We have a lot to get to as the markets limp to the finish of a not-so-great 2008, just to say the least. Everybody will be glad to see it in the rearview mirror, Absolutely. I'm sure. Tonight, a lot of our time is going to be spent looking at uh, many different sectors and how they may perform in the new year. And to help us through it, we have Vince Farrell, Chief Investment Officer at the Soleil Group. He's tonight's guest host. Vince, always good to have you here. Thank you. We'll catch up with you in just a minute. Great. Absolutely. But first things first, we want to get you all caught up on today's numbers. The Dow lost 31 points today, but year-to-date, it's down 36%. The S&P 500 took a little shave today, but it's off 41% this year. And the NASDAQ was down 1.3% today for the year. It is now down 43%. 0.5%. And for more on the market action for the day, here's Bob Bassani. Volume has been light and stocks have traded in a very narrow range really since last Tuesday. The big issue, what's January going to look like? Traders are long out of 2008. Two issues for 2009 in January. Number one, concerns about additional redemptions from funds due to the Madoff scandal. And secondly, what the size of that stimulus package might look like that the president-elect will in all likelihood sign as soon as he comes into office. Those are two X factors. Starting moving today, we saw real nice moves up in energy. Energy stocks have really bottomed in the last few weeks. All the big names moved up as we saw oil move up on geopolitical concerns as well as the weak dollar. Real estate investment trusts have also come off the bottom recently, but they were notably weak today. The Wall Street Journal had a fairly critical article on some recent uh, concerns about retail malls and retail real estate investment trusts. And of course, SL Green, which is an office REIT, cut their dividend essentially in half. Take a look at some of the retail oriented stocks GameStop, Liz Claiborne, JCPenney, Jones Apparel, all of them on the weak side. There was very little sign of a last minute holiday rush. Finally, Dow Chemical and Roman Haas on the weak side. Kuwait canceled a joint venture with Dow Chemical, and that caused some to question whether or not Dow Chemical could complete. It's planned acquisition of Roman Haas. Back to you. All right, Bob Pisani. It was, of course, a very rough year, but there is some optimism out there, at least for some people who think maybe the worst is behind us. Peter Schiff, president of Euro-Pacific Capital, not generally one of those highly optimistic folks, but we invited him uh, to join us anyway, at least for some counterpoint. And Vince Farrell is our guest host uh, for the evening. Uh, Peter, let me uh, just begin. You had a very interesting column uh, in the newspaper over the weekend, I believe it was the Wall Street Journal, uh, in which you said that Basically, the idea uh, that the government uh, can do something that individuals can't do in the face of, reception, of a recession uh, is, is sort of fallacy. In other words, that, that the idea that the government can spend when everybody else, businesses and individuals, must tighten their belts is, is hooey. Right. No, it, it, it's, it's a fallacy. What's happening is Americans are broke. We've borrowed all this money to spend, and now we can't borrow anymore, mainly because the creditors have reached their limit. They don't want to lend anymore. And so the government is borrowing for us, but they're forcing us deeper into debt by taking on uh, additional liabilities. But we need, we need to start paying off our debts. We need to start savings again so that we can have money to lend out to entrepreneurs, uh, to start businesses, to make capital investments, so we can go back to work producing goods instead of consuming them. But the government is simply pouring gasoline on a fire that it's set, and it's going to do a lot of damage with all these stimuluses he, and bailouts. Vince, Peter is very concerned that by pouring money, gasoline onto the fire, in his uh, metaphor, uh, what you end up with is ultimately massive inflation down the pike. Do you think we're going to see that next year? And if not next year, do you think we're going to see it anytime soon? Yeah, I think that's the risk. I, I uh, don't disagree with Peter. I might disagree a little bit with the, with the end game, but I think inflation is part of the end game. Uh, I'm not sure that you have a whole lot of choice now. I think government debt is needed to substitute for private debt. And, Why? Uh, uh, in 1933, unemployment, non-farm payroll was uh, 30 percent when Roosevelt started the great stimulus campaign, and it fell to 11 percent. So I don't know that you can sit back and do nothing yeah, right Vince, now. Well, please, let me finish. So I think that you have to uh, substitute government debt for private debt. Why? We are going to pay the inflationary price, and hopefully, I think that's but, why Bernanke wants permission to issue Fed bonds to try and sterilize Vince, this debt further down the road. Why, why do we need more debt? We have too much debt. We need to pay it back. We don't, we don't want to substitute government debt for private debt. We want less debt. We want to pay off debt. Well, I, I agree with that, Peter, but I don't think we have the choice. I think yes, we, we have do. To, no, I'm sorry. I, I 
might respectfully disagree that what we need to do is not allow another Great Depression to take well, place by not but, doing anything. I think but we're we going to create. Vince, the debt. problem is we're in the process of creating another Great Depression just the way we created the Depression in the 1930s by doing exactly what you're advocating. Well, and I, the problem I argue is differently, Peter, because I think in 1930 we shrunk the money supply by a third and world trade dropped by two no, no. thirds because of Smoot Hawley. And it not, wasn't until 1933 when Roosevelt started the uh, stimulus campaign no. did the economy start to the, improve. No, and the Ilkan, worst of the recession. 1937 increase in interest rates. Peter, Peter answer Vince here. No, the worst of the recession I think was in 36. Roosevelt didn't cure it, he made it worse. And the problem was in the 1920s, the Federal Reserve blew up a stock market bubble. When it burst, we needed to have a severe recession. But Hoover wouldn't let that happen. He tried to intervene. He tried to prop up companies. He tried to keep companies from failing. He did a lot of things. He was the most interventionist president we had ever had up until that point. That started the Great Depression. He handed the ball to Roosevelt. Roosevelt made one mistake after another. He compounded it, and it lasted all the way through the Second World War. Peter. We're going to do the same thing now, only we risk massive inflation on top but, of depression. And in that picture, in that inflationary picture, Peter, there are some obvious bets as far as what investors can do uh, with their money. I, I was noticing today the fact of the matter is that now you can buy the S&P 500 with one ounce of gold. That is to say that no, no, one no. ounce right. of gold is more valuable in today's dollar terms than the S&P 500. What's your take on where the inflation story goes from well, here? It, look, it's here. The Dow is now worth fewer than 10 ounces of gold. Looking at the Dow Jones, it started the year at 15 ounces Well, I'm talking of gold. about the S&P 500. I know, but I'm talking in terms of Dow right now because it started the year at, at 15 ounces of gold. Now it's worth less than 10. Of course, in 2000, the Dow was worth 43 ounces of gold. I think in 2009, the Dow is going to drop to below 7 ounces of gold, maybe as low as 5 ounces of gold. And over the next 5 to 10 years, the Dow will be worth just 1 ounce of gold, just the way the S&P is right now, which is almost a 90% decline from it, here. Is that a bet on declining stocks or is that a bet on gaining gold? It's actually going to be a combination of both. It's going to be a huge decline in the real value of stocks and a, a, and, and a, and a rise in the price of gold as well. Okay, Vince, obviously yeah. you have a totally different thesis here. So what are some of the ways uh, that investors yeah. play in your thesis? Well, first, uh, I really hope Peter's wrong. I, I, I think Peter probably hopes he's wrong, too. I, I, I admire the conviction. He's been so right for quite some time now, too. Uh, I disagree about the historical interpretation of the 1930s, neither here nor there. We both agree to some extent that we're going to have an inflationary outcome. And if I